Hi, pre-Ks, come on in. Find a spot you like a lot. One, two, three. Find a spot you like a lot. Listen to me. Find a spot you like a lot. Three, two, one. Find a spot you like a lot. Let's have some fun. Welcome back to Pied Piper School. The last time I saw you was Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. The last time I saw you was Wednesday, but that's not today. Tick tock goes the clock. As the time it's passing, tick tock goes the clock. Time passes by. We can't stop it. We've tried to stop it when we're having a delicious ice cream cone. You want it to last forever? No, doesn't happen. When you're out on the playground and you want to stay out there till it gets dark, no, it doesn't happen. Time keeps passing, and with that, we need to learn how to tell time. So that's what we're working on today at Pied Piper School. It's all about the time. And the day passed, we went from Wednesday to a brand new day. If you said Thursday, thankful Thursday, you are correct, because it's Thursday. Th -th -th Thursday, th -th -th Thursday's back in the middle of the week. Yes, it's Thursday. Th -th -th Thursday, a Thursday smack in the middle of the week. After Wednesday, we're getting ready for Friday in the weekend. We're in the 20 family, easy breezy. After 28 comes 29, looking fine. Put those numbers on the number line. When there's a two in the front seat and an eight in the back seat. Two, eight, two, eight, it's 28. Today is the 28th day in the merry old month of May. You've got that right. And we are talking about time. And we said that time keeps passing. So let's see our number line. It helps us learn time because we found out that we need this number line so we can count by fives. Counting by fives helps us on the circle clock because every one of these numbers has five minutes between it. So if we know how to count by fives, we'll be able to use the circle clock. Five, ten. 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Stop. We don't have to go to 100 on the clock because the circle clock stops at the number 12. There's no 13 o'clock or 16 o'clock or 19 o'clock. It stops at the number 12. So we're going to count by fives all the way around the outside of the clock. Five for each number. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, and we're back to the top of the clock. So when this big hand is on the 12, that's the beginning of any hour. We can pick any hour on the clock. Up. Oh, Nine o'clock, move that little hand. Now it's five o'clock, move that little hand. Ooh, it's stuck. Now it's 11 o'clock, move that little hand. Now it's two o'clock, easy breezy. The little hand tells us the hour, and that's what we say first. The big hand the blue hand here tells us the minutes after the hour. That minute hand keeps tick, tick, ticking all day long. Every time the second hand, that skinny little red hand, goes around the clock, this minute hand has to go one more minute. So as this minute hand goes around, each time it reaches a new number, we count by fives and then we'll get to a new hour. So after it goes around from four o'clock, now it is five o'clock. It goes around from five o'clock, now it is six o'clock. Those two hands help us tell time. So we'll start at seven o'clock. Time to wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. It's seven o'clock in the morning. All right, the clock keeps moving. It's 7.05, five minutes after seven, get up. 10 minutes after seven, climb out of bed. 
715, 715. Time to find your clothes. 720, get your shoes on. 725, run downstairs. 7.30, mom asked if you brushed your teeth, you forgot. Say you'll do it after breakfast. 7.35, you sit down at the table. 7.40, you have your cereal, milk, and some fruit. 7.45, brush those teeth before you go to school. 7.50, grab that backpack, put your coat on. 7.55, run to the mailbox, the bus stop. Because at 8 o'clock, the bus comes. Wow, you did a lot in that hour. And every hour is like that. It's packed with so many things that you do. As that minute hand goes around the clock telling you what to do. That's why we're practicing counting by fives all week long. We can also use our number line to talk about time passing in years. When you came to Pied Piper School, you were one and a half or two years old. Some of you were still very little when you came to Pied Piper School. One or two. When you were born, you were zero. So it took you a while before you came to Pied Piper School. You were growing and learning at home. Then you went to the blue group when you were three, pre-K when you were four, and you're turning five, and now you're off to kindergarten. Wow, you're just the beginning of this number line. You can now live to be a hundred years old. As you're growing, you can live to be a hundred. I'm no fool, no siree. I can live to be a hundred, you see. So you're just at the beginning of our number line of aging. Now you're gonna travel to the single digits all the time you'll be in school. Kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. Some of you in Yorktown go to a new school, Crompon, for fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade. Then you go to a new school for seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade. You go to a new school, high school, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade. Wow, you're in school for the whole first two lines here. And then off to college you might go. You might only go to college for a year or two if you want to be a police officer or a firefighter. Make cabinets. You can go to school for just a couple of years and then you can go out and work. Or you might stay in school till you're 22. That's called a bachelor's degree. You can go to take lots of jobs when you finish your bachelor's degree. Join a company, work at a store, sell things. You can be a teacher and then go off to get your master's degree while you're teaching. Some people go two more years to get a called a master's degree. They stay at college to get smarter. Or if you're a lawyer or a doctor, wow, you have to go to school even more years to learn more and more things. If you're a lawyer or a doctor, an astronaut, those people have to go to school sometimes till you're 28. Holy moly, that's a long time. You've been in school for three lines. Wow, and then you go off and get a job. Then when you enter the 30 family, oh, maybe you'll have a house of your own. You might get married, want to share your house from, for someone in the 30 family, start having children. You'll have a family, you're in the 30 family, all the way to the 40 family. Oh, you'll be busy on this line. Working hard and having a family. In the 40 family, your family's growing up. They want to go to school and go to college. They're getting that age. You're working very hard helping them get their education to the 50 family. Then sometimes in the 50 family, you're a grandma or grandpa. You still work hard. You spend time with your family. You're in the 50 family till you get to the 60 family. You're traveling through the 60 family. Now you get to 65. We talked about that number because Kathy turned 65 this year. Sometimes at 65, people say, oh, I've worked so many years. I've been working so hard. I go down to the city. I work all day long. I'm getting tired of doing that. So at 65, you can retire and do different things. Some people retire and take a different job. 
Maybe they're going to do something different, work in a store for a while or work at a bank or drive a bus. They might do something different at 65 or they might go on long vacations and see all around the world to places they haven't seen before. Or like Kathy, you can continue working past 65, continue with your job. When you get in the 70 family, you might be a great grandparent. That means your children's children are having children. You get to see them in the 70 family and the 80 family. And if you take good care of yourself and stay healthy, you can get through the 90 family to 100. You'll be learning about the 100 days of kindergarten and the life cycle is now up to 100 years old. Time keeps passing. Tick tock goes that clock. All right, and our trick today is all about time and it's called Time is Up. Let's take a look at our story today. Time's up. It's about a farmer and some animals. Let's see what happens. Let's raise this up so you can see the pictures. Is that good? All right. Time is up. By Keith Faulkner. Pictures by Rory Tiger. Farmer's chores. Oh, he has quite a schedule with lots of times on at 5 o'clock a.m. in the morning. Rise and shine. He's up early. 5.30, milk the cows. 6 o'clock a.m., milk the goats. 6.15 a.m., collect the eggs. 6.30 a.m., eat breakfast. 7.30 a.m., muck out the cow shed. 8.45 a.m., clean the stables. 9.30 a.m., clean the pigsty. 10.15 a.m., clean the hen house. 11 o'clock a.m., sweep the farmyard. Boy, is this farmer busy. 11.45 a.m., fill the water troughs so the animals have drinks. 12 o'clock, oh, now it turns to p.m., after lunch. P.m., eat your lunch. 1 o'clock p.m., plow the field. 2.30 p.m., plant the seeds. 3.45 p.m., pick the vegetables. 4 o'clock p.m., gather hay bales. 4.30 p.m., build haystacks. 5 o'clock p.m., fix fence. 5.15 p.m., paint shed. 5.45 p.m., clean tractor. 6.30 p.m., pick apples. 7 o'clock p.m., collect honey. 7.15 p.m., take a bath. He got very dirty. 8.30 p.m., eat supper. That's late. And 10 o'clock p.m., go to bed. What a busy day that farmer has. Tomorrow is farmer's birthday, said Pig Piggy. He deserves a birthday treat. Let's give him the day off. How do we do that, the animals asked. While he's sleeping, from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., we'll do all the chores, Piggy said, pointing to the long list of farmer's chores that hung on the barn wall. It's 9 p.m. now, said Piggy. After farmer goes to bed at 10 o'clock, we can get busy. As soon as farmer was asleep, Piggy sneaked into the house to borrow with the farmer's clock so he could stay on schedule. He'd use it to keep track of the time. It's 10.30 now, said Piggy, looking at the clock. We have all night to do those chores. But don't forget, we must finish by 5 o'clock in the morning, Rooster clucked. That's when dawn comes and I crow to wake up the farmer. We can do it, we can do it, said the mice. We'll gather any corn that's lying around in the barn. We'll help too, said the cats. We'll keep an eye on the mice so they don't eat the corn, Piggy laughed. There's so much to do. We better get started. We only have till 5 o'clock a.m. By 10.45, Farmer had, was snoring in his warm bed. A moon and stars shone bright over the farm, and the animals started their teamwork. After milking the cows and gathering the eggs, the animals began to clean their own spaces. Piggy was sure to keep everyone on schedule with the clock. Farmer usually milks the cows, goats, and collects the eggs first, said Piggy. The hens cleared the hen house, and they cleaned it up. Horse cleaned his stable, and cows shoveled out the cow shed. Whoops! I've been so busy organizing, I forgot to clean my own sty, Piggy said. 
Don't worry, the geese honked. We'll help. Thank you, Piggy said. He glanced back at the list of chores in the barn. We need to hurry. It's almost midnight, 12 o'clock a.m. Let's tidy up the farmyard and fill the water troughs right away. At one o'clock, Piggy began to panic. He rushed around the farm. Horse was plowing the field. But who would do the planting? We'll dig the holes, said the dogs. We're good at digging. We'll plant the seeds, said the ducks. Get the hay bales and build the haystacks by 2.30, Piggy shouted to cows, then go down to the bottom field and carry the vegetable stacks back to the barn by 3 o'clock. Moo, it's hard work being a farmer, the cows all agreed. At 4 a.m., with just one hour left, Piggy paced in the farmyard. There were still so many chores left to do. Has anybody cleaned the tractor or fed the dogs, fixed the fence or painted the shed, Piggy gasped. Bah, we'll clean the tractor, sheep said, turning on the hose. Donkey painted the shed. The chickens carried the apples. Duck collected honey from the honeybees. The animals raced around. There was one more special thing they had to do. Time's up, Piggy shouted. The clock says 5 o'clock a.m. Rooster crowed. As the sun came up over the hill, the animals gathered under farmer's window. What a day, they heard the farmer yawn. All my chores to do, and on my birthday too. As farmer leaned out the window to greet the new day, he rubbed his eyes. The farm is clean. My chores are all done. What a surprise, he cried. Then farmer saw the barn roof. That was the biggest surprise of all. Piggy and the animals had painted a special happy birthday banner. Happy birthday. This would be farmer's best day ever. What a great story called Time is Up.